Number one, need to learn terminal command. Reality, terminal not necessary. There's a common misconception that to do anything on Linux, uh, you need to use the command line, aka the terminal. You've probably seen the memes where to download a browser on Linux, you supposedly have to open the terminal and type in hundreds of lines of code. However, that's all that it is, a meme. Modern day Linux is extremely user friendly. You get tons of system apps that provide you with a graphical user interface, similar to what you are accustomed to on Mac OS or Windows. In fact, contrary to popular belief, you can completely avoid the Linux terminal and do all your day-to-day -day work and system maintenance tasks without any uses. issues. Uh, number two, outdated uh, user interface, reality, modern and polished design. Uh, there was a time when Linux desktop looked a bit janky and they didn't feel polished, uh, the UI elements lacked cohesion, uh, the fonts were inconsistent and the icon felt outdated. However, those days are long gone. Modern Linux has made significant strides in improving its overall aesthetics. Uh, today, uh, Linux looks amazing and stunning. In some cases, uh, it even surpasses the polished user interfaces you get with Windows and Mac. For instance, a desktop environment like a KDE Plasma and GNOME feel so polished and modern that even Microsoft took cues from them when designing Windows 11. Number 3. Difficult to install. Reality. Easier to install than Windows. While it's true that some distribution like Arch and Debian offer a terminal-based installation process that requires technical know-how. Uh, these aren't intended uh, for the masses. There are many user-friendly Nexus distros like Ubuntu, Fedora, Linux Mint, Garuda, etc. that make installation a breeze. Installing a Linux distro is often faster than installing Windows. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, number four, uh, no use for software. Reality, software for all use cases. It's true that there aren't Linux native versions of Microsoft Office and Adobe Creative Suite or Creative Cloud, which are extremely popular professional software. But that doesn't mean you are left with no options. Linux has tons of powerful software for Office and Creative workflows. The only issue is that they aren't as heavily advertised so you don't know them. For Office work, you have LibreOffice, which comes with a fully featured list of Office apps for document creation, uh, spreadsheets, uh, presentations, and more. This can even Save files in Microsoft Office comparable formats, so you can easily share them with your colleagues. Of course, if you use Google Workspace, then Linux will be will no uh, hindrance at all. To help with your creative work, you have uh, well-regarded free and open source uh, alternatives to Adobe's offerings, GIMP alternative to Photoshop, Inkscape alternative to Illustrator, Scribus alternative to InDesign, Kidden Life alternative to Premiere Pro, Lunacy alternative to Adobe, Audacity alternative to Audition. Then you have Blender, DaVinci Resolve, and Krita, which are all used by creative professionals and are natively supported on Linux. I'm just barely scratching the surface with these mentions. Many popular apps like Discord, Spotify, Zoom, Telegram, Dropbox, and VLC also have native apps for Linux. And number five, Windows apps not supported. Reality can run Windows apps. Some Windows apps aren't supported on Linux. 
while you can use alternatives to bypass these limitations if you are in the clutch you can technically run windows software and even x files on linux using compatibility layers and virtualization uh, for example you can use compatibility layers like wine battles or crossover to run basic windows programs like notepad plus plus acrobat reader photoshop cs6 winamp and more if you are willing to tweak a few settings and scripts you can even get microsoft office 16 to run via wine albeit uh, with some hiccups here and there a more robust solution would uh, be to run a fully virtualized instance of windows within your linux system this gives you a full windows environment to run any windows software you want all within your main linux system the only caveat is that windows virtualization requires significant hardware resources so you need a powerful system to pull it off smoothly so as you can see is you can technically run all windows software and even windows itself on your linux pc with minor tweaks here and there number six can't run games reality support many triple uh, ai titles it's true that gaming on Linux wasn't always the best experience, but thanks to the Steam Deck, more specifically SteamOS, Linux now supports a huge library of games and many AAA titles. Game developers are now offering native Linux support for their titles. For the ones that are not natively supported, you can use a compatibility layer called Proton to run them. You can check Proton TV uh, to get an idea of all the Steam games that are currently play playable on Linux. At the time of writing, you've got access to some awesome uh, AAA titles like Elden Ring, Sekiro, Red Dead Redemption, Halo Master Chief Collection, The Elder Scrolls, Scream, etc. to run smoothly on Linux. Number seven, NVIDIA GPUs not supported. Reality, NVIDIA drivers bundle. For a long time, NVIDIA GPUs didn't play well with Linux system because of driver incompatibility. While users did have access to the NVIDIA open source drivers, they weren't the best. However, this is changing rapidly. Since 2022, NVIDIA has been working on its open source NVIDIA drivers for its GeForce and Workstation GPUs. At the time of writing, NVIDIA drivers are excellent. My current system running Garuda Linux is powered by an RTX 3060 and I haven't noticed any graphical issues. So there you have it, uh, seven uh, myths about Linux that no longer hold water. From user-friendly interfaces and easy installation to robust uh, software support and gaming capabilities, you know, has evolved into a powerful and versatile operating system. It's time to reconsider those old beliefs and give Linux a try.